and welcome to a very special episode of Tech Tuesday. Ooh. I'm your host, Amy Arwoodmark. I'm here at MMS, and I made a new friend, Mr. Nate. Hi. Hi, Nate. Who hey. are you? I'm Nate Zienert. I'm the, the Zienert on Twitter. Uh, I'm a senior lead consultant for Catapult Systems. I focus primarily on EMS, Windows 10, a um, little bit of OSD. Uh, you guys are familiar with it. Yeah, sure. just, just a little, little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, focus primarily in those technologies and uh, slowly learning Azure as well. Okay, yeah. I think we're all kind of slowly learning yeah. Azure as well. <laughs> um, so I learned something super interesting about you. You are you own a user group as well? Yeah, there's three of us. A uh, couple of Microsoft employees and myself run Memug out of Denver. That's M-E-M-U-G, and you can visit our website, memug.org. We meet at the Microsoft office in the Denver Tech Center on the fourth Friday of every month from 3 to 5 p.m. Okay. And generally we have pizza, generally uh, half the time we might have beer. Okay. But. All right. I will make sure to come during a time when you have beer. Yes. I mean, I do love pizza, but yeah. pizza I and beer go really good together. I do try to announce the sessions in advance okay. so people know. So. Cool. <laughs> awesome. So it's been a lot of fun being at MMS because it's kind of like a, a giant user group. It and is. there's it's a, just a week long of drinking from the fire hose. Um, oh my gosh. Shout out to everyone who put it together and, of course, all the speakers. Yeah. And you were a speaker. I was. What sessions did you do? So I did a session on WPF, uh, GUIs in PowerShell. So empowering your coworkers or your employees uh, or even just line level employees who do things in PowerShell with you know a front end and you can do it right that way. I did a beer session with Scott Carrillo and Donnie Taylor on loading beer data into log analytics because who doesn't like beer, who doesn't like Azure, why not combine them both? Uh, and then finally, I did a session with Bill Wilcock on the 1809 Express updates going bye-bye. Okay, with awesome. 10. So I know Phil, because yeah. I work with him. Right. Um, so can you tell me a little bit about what you guys presented on? Yeah, sure. So Microsoft, when their kind of, their patch mentality, right, has been in Windows 7 and before, like, here's individual patches for each little fix that mm -hmm. we have, right? Yeah. Microsoft said, this isn't working. We have to combine it all into a big cumulative update so that we have like a known patch level for workstations mm -hmm. and we don't have this confusion. So they've released these cumulative updates now that contain all of the patches and all of the fixes since RTM. Those got pretty large. Yeah. Right? Uh -huh. Like a gig and a half is about where they level out per OS, I think, for Windows 10. Um, so they said, how, how could we do this a little bit better and make the end user experience better as well? And so the Express Update platform was kind of built out of that. The idea was Microsoft could deliver a 30 megabyte file to the computer and then the computer can generate the differentials or the differences in data necessary to bring it, that computer up to a patch level. Mm -hmm. It's a great idea. For anybody who enabled it, it was awful. <laughs> Right? We had five and a half gigabytes of data downloaded per yeah. month in a, what's called a baseless PSF file, which had every change to the OS since RTM for that revision and um, caused a lot of grief with storage engineers. They weren't having it. Um, it also just kind of complicated the whole process. A yeah, little for bit. sure. And it, the, the initial revision of it, Phil talked about this in our session, but uh, it was making an individual bits request for each like chunk of data that needed to be, yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> that hurts. It was like, it was like two or 3,000 requests on average or something uh -huh. insane, and the process would take like four hours to update, just a cumulative update. Okay. Um, so Microsoft goes back to the drawing board and says, we have to do this a little bit better. They put, you know, they put Express updates on the shelf, essentially. They gave it, you know, it was 18 months, we gave it a run. Let's see if we can do this better. And what they devised was a plan to take your current version of a file, bring it back to RTM, mm -hmm. and then you now have a known state of, I just have to bring the file from RTM to current. So the new cumulative update process beginning in Windows 10 1809 and Windows Server 1809, just, it just does that, right? Mm -hmm. We take a file from version 3.0 to 1.0 and then to 4.0. Uh, and then it stores those files, uh, the differentials that help convert the file uh, in a side-by-side -side folder on Windows so that you can roll back the updates. The main benefit of this, it was like a lot of 
geek, geek speak, which I know we all love, right? Mm -hmm. The Tech Tuesday. Um, the updates are now about 150 megabytes. Okay. Even less, right? And yep. instead of generating range requests in bits to your Windows Update server, mm -hmm. everything is now contained in the file and it can apply the entire update in one fell swoop. Okay. So it reduces the amount of time it takes to actually apply the update. Uh, in our lab testing, I think we were looking at about from 13 minutes down to seven or eight. So it actually reduces the amount of time that yeah. we're doing things, um, obviously reduces the storage cost. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and then uh, the Express Update platform had a problem with peer-to-peer -peer solutions. Yes, it sure did. Just a little, right? <laughs> just, just a little. Just a little, <laughs> yeah. Hashes didn't match. Super peers got upset, branch mm -hmm. cache, you're not downloading that much data and it might not even be the same ranges. So uh, you couldn't leverage those things to reduce your WAN bandwidth right. cost. In the Express Update platform, because everything is contained in that single file, peer caching, branch caching, all going to be extra super supported. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. So that's, that's the Express Update platform. It's, or the, I guess, the cumulative update platform uh -huh is replacing Express Update. Yeah, it sounds like it'll be a little bit less worrisome for everyone who's involved yep. in owning updates because it's not just the person pushing it out, it's right. the people who have to support the, the network and the storage, yeah. as you said. And yeah. it sounded, Express Update sounded like a good idea at the time. I mean, I, like I definitely heard a big sigh of relief from customers that I would talk to when Express Updates first came out, like, right. thank goodness this is coming out, this will help a lot, and then yeah. they started using it and they were like, yeah. no, this isn't what we wanted, right. take it away. Right. Um, so I think, I think everyone's gonna be a little bit happier now going forward, yeah. so. Yeah, I would say so. So the, the one question that always comes up when I talk about the new cumulative update platform is what happens if we have corruption, right? Yeah. So we've got version 3.0 of a file, but uh, the bits are corrupted or we've got extra data. Somebody dropped the computer mm -hmm. and the hard drive, you know, did something funny. Mm -hmm. um, Microsoft's recommended solution is to use a Windows repair source. If you don't have access to Windows updates, I actually should clarify that. The, if you rerun the update, it will magically work the second time as Microsoft's goal. And they do this by having that baseless PSF file that was built for the Express Update platform and they put it up in the cloud in Windows Update. So if you have access, or if your workstation rather has access to Microsoft Update or Windows Update, uh, when it attempts to finish, or when it attempts to apply all of the updates, it will make tracking of changes that didn't work. Mm -hmm. And at the very end of the process, uh, it will fail, but it will instruct Windows to go grab those files that failed and then do a self-repair mm -hmm. of Windows. I have clients who don't allow access to Windows updates. I feel like. Yeah. Yeah, there's a few. There's a few out there, mm -hmm. and for good reason. But Microsoft's action plan for those clients is to build a Windows repair source. Um, if you're not familiar with the Windows repair source, it's just a storage location where you would keep all of your Windows side-by-side -side files for an OS, or you would keep a, an entire copy of your image. The problem with using this and with the new cumulative update process is those files that might be necessary for one revision of an OS, say like N minus five, might not be available in the RTM copy mm -hmm. of Windows side-by-side, -side, or might not be available in N plus two, right? Because those files routinely get deleted. Mm -hmm. um, so. I've worked on a script that will actually build a uh, Windows repair source for you. So it will take the side-by-side -side folder from an RTM version of Windows, apply an update, and then difference the folder and copy all of the changes from side-by-side -side into that folder and then you know, repeat ad nauseum until all of the updates are applied. And now you have a copy of all of the changes that have been made and a good repair source for mm -hmm. Windows to work from at that point. So it's called Build WRS. It's available on my GitHub uh, under random PowerShell. I okay. Think. Yeah. Um, it, it ends up being about, I think in our testing, 12 and a half gigabytes of data between like RTM of 1809 and March. So the file will just continue to grow a little bit. So there is a storage cost associated with it, um, but at least you don't have to enable access mm -hmm. to Windows updates yeah. at that point. And okay. it's not a per month, you know, it's yeah. like 
12 gigabytes, 15 gigabytes long term. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's it's actually seems really reasonable. Yeah. For yeah, sure. I think so. so. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Well, I want to say thank you yeah, for joining us today. Thank you for having me. No problem. Yeah. Um, so if you're a regular Tech Tuesday watcher, make sure that you tune in next time. I will have another guest as well. And if you missed out on signing up for MMS, make sure that you sign up for the Jazz Edition. Yes. Jazz Hands in New Orleans. Yes. Uh, that'll be this fall, the week after Microsoft Ignite. Yeah, that's Otherwise, right. you could come to MMS next May. It's the first week in May. Um, not Mother's Day. Not anymore. Mother's Day again. Yes. So no excuses for not coming to an MMS. That's right. <laughs> um, so thank you very much. Course, and thank thanks for watching. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.